Hi, I'm Josh with Woodland Mills, and this is our full-length product video of the WC88 PTO driven wood chipper. In these videos, we like to cover everything from the crate sizes and dimensions to how they're shipped. We do a full in-depth product walk around, and then we actually hook the chipper up to our tractor, and we're gonna run it and show you how it works. So I'll start with the crate dimensions and sizes. We've got a width of 46 inches, a depth of 34, and a height of 50 inches to the top of the cardboard here. From there, the shipping weight is 1,054 pounds, and then the product weight inside is about 900 pounds. Because of its weight and its size, it has to be shipped by transport truck, and then where available, we have a tailgate service to get it down to the ground for a curbside delivery. Once the crate's on the ground, the upper portion of the iron crate is unbolted with four bolts, one in each corner, and then the top of the crate's gonna come off, exposing the chipper, and then you're gonna be able to back your tractor right up, put the three-point hitch onto the chipper, lift it off the base crate, and take it in so you're ready for assembly. So we've got one of the chippers fully assembled here, they do come 90% assembled in the crate, but you are gonna be responsible to assemble a few portions of the chipper. So the manual for operation and for assembly is found here in the manual tube, as well as a pre-startup checklist that you can use before you attach it and start running it on your tractor. You're gonna to have to assemble the in-feed chute, which is comprised of the four panels as well as the gray bar and the red bar. And this is part of the folding assembly. You're also gonna to have to install the discharge chute with the four bolts that attach it to the upper housing. The hardware to assemble all that is also found here in the manual tube. Next, I wanna talk about the PTO shaft. So we include the PTO shaft with the chipper it's adjustable in length. It has the safety chains to keep the sheath from rotating and there's locations to put them through the face of the chipper as well as onto your tractor. We do have a note here right on the six flying connector that's reminding you to trim your PTO shaft. So within the manual, we cover measuring the distances between the shafts and then how to trim it accordingly, depending on your tractor and the travel of your three-point hitch arms. So the PTO shaft here is designed to spin at 540 RPMs, and then it spins this larger lower pulley, and then we use a series of four belts to the flywheel speed of 1200 RPMs. We've got a large two-inch main shaft that holds the flywheel You'll see we've got flange bearings here with our grease fittings for maintenance. And then we have spring tensioner that's adjustable to keep the proper tension on the four belts for operation. Close this back up. You're gonna see this is a category one three-point hitch that is quick attach compatible. So with a quick attach, you'll be able to back up lift up the chipper and hook up your PTO shaft. From here, I wanna go and show you inside. So we'll open this right up. So you'll see a series of four blades. We have inner and outer blades and we stagger this to smooth out the load on the flywheel. And then you'll see the paddles in the back. So as the chips come through the blade gap, they're coming into the back of the flywheel and then the paddles are grabbing them and sending them out the discharge chute. For blade maintenance, we include a locking pin. So this locking pin is gonna rotate and you're able to line it up with the hole in the flywheel and relock it. So if you're in here at all and you're working on the chipper, you should be locking your flywheel out. It also gives you a good solid stop for when you're torquing your blades. 
on the blades, we have a double edge. So we have a leading edge and then we have the tailing edge, but these are reversible. So if you dull the front edge, you can rotate the blades and reinstall them, retorque them, and you have a second edge there on the same blade. You'll see on the back of the two inch shaft, we also have the flange bearing with the grease fitting for maintenance. Now, depending on the size of tractor you're hooking this up to, we include an adjustable base. So you'll see on the side here, we have a series of holes. So right now, this is the shipping position. And for a lot of our users, they just leave it in this lower position. But if you do have a taller tractor or you wanna get the chipper up higher off the ground, you can use these other holes and you put your tractor on the three-point hitch, you lift the chipper up while these are removed, and then you can reinstall these with the chipper in a higher position. As we come around the side here, we're gonna see the infeed drive system. So this has a fully integrated hydraulic infeed. This is the infeed motor. It's hooked up to an eight inch diameter infeed uh, drive wheel with a chisel edge teeth on it. Our line sets go through a speed controller here and this allows us to control the speed of the infeed. And you're gonna use that to uh, make sure the load on your tractor matches the diameter of the material you're using. So on smaller tractors, bigger material, you're gonna to wanna to slow it down. Higher horsepower, bigger material, you should be able to run straight through. So this is a, a one to 10. And again, this is controlling the infeed speed, pushing the material into the flywheel. That infeed system is tensioned with a set of springs and you'll see the preloaders here. This is preloaded so that even on the smallest branches on the bottom, you still have an infeed pressure. So we're, we're pushing that roller down against that lower plate to push that material into the chipper. And you can preload this. If you're doing really big material all the time, you could back these off. If you're doing small material, more likely you could do these down or somewhere in the middle is a good place to start for general chipping. We'll see there's a bolt in here with a lock nut or jam nut. This is setting our lowest position. So this determines where that roller sits just above the base of the chipper infeed. And again, you wanna keep it so it's not grinding against the itself. So you wanna keep a, a nice tight space there based on the smallest material you wanna be able to pull into the chipper. If we follow these line sets down, we're gonna see our controller, which gives us our forward neutral and reverse. And this gets hooked up with a linkage back to the red bar. And I can show you that later. We'll see here, we've got our line return line back, and then we have a pickup line to the hydraulic tank. So we can't ship any hydraulic fluid in the tank, but it holds a five gallon pail of ISO 32 hydraulic fluid um, is a good general purpose fluid. You can use fluids that are more uh, apt for your climate if you're in a hotter zone, but it ships with none and you will have to get your own oil to fill that tank. There's a filter within the tank and a pickup line on the far side. We'll see in underneath here, the pump. So this is the hydraulic pump. It has a coupling which is housed inside of this gray assembly here. And that fits right on the bottom of that jack shaft that's turning at the 540 RPMs coming out of your tractor. As we move further back, I wanna show you how the infeed chute, we've made it so it folds up. And that's basically a storage position um, or a transport position. So if you're gonna be transporting it um, you know, through the woods or through the uh, narrow trails, this is quite a bit to have in behind your tractor. So it is nice to be able to fold it up. To do that, you just gotta make sure that the discharge chute has been rotated. So you'll see we have a 360 degree rotation on this. There's a locking pin here and we can actually set it so we don't have to hold it while we do it and then we can bring it back. With that out of the way, I can grab the red bar and I can rotate the entire infeed up. And we've, 
We've got a rubberized pad on the top here of the gray bar, and that allows the rest without damaging any of the paint finish. Now, as we come around the back, you're gonna see the linkage that gets connected to the controller. So we've got a storage position here, so it stays on the chute, and that's what lets me grab that red bar and move it around. In use, I'm gonna take this out and attach it to the forward reverse neutral controller for operating the chipper. So as we come down, you'll see the two latches here as well. From here, you're gonna go in and you can latch with the two draw latches. You'll see them pull in nice and tight. And then we can pull this lower pin and we bring it down onto the directional control valve here. So from there, you'll see the red bar now works it. So with the red bar all the way in, like we have it now, the in-feed roller is actually gonna go into reverse and start pushing the material back out. And that works as a safety for us. So if we need to kick it out, you give it a push and it brings it back out. For forward, or feeding into the chipper, we're going all the way back and then neutral is right in the middle. With the chute in the down position, I wanna show you the gray bar. So this is a solid three quarter steel bar. And we use that when material's guiding in, it gives us a nice soft rounded edge to pull those logs and branches over. The infeed dimensions are 26 inches wide at the bottom, 24 inches wide at the top, and 28 inches tall. So you got a nice big area for those branches to start folding in, and that's where that gray bar comes into play as it folds those branches and feeds them into the chipper. Now I'm gonna reverse these steps because I have a few more things I wanna show you inside the infeed housing. So with the chute folded up, I can show you some of our, our debris flaps. So this just helps debris that's tumbling around from coming back out at you. It's also a good reminder that you should never put any part of your body anywhere close to them. As we go in here, we can see a full eight inch wide. And then when this wheel goes up, we have a full eight inch height for the infeed. And this, these chisel knives are designed to climb up over that material as you present it. So with these flaps down. I had mentioned about the hydraulic fluid and the hydraulic fluid filler is here. Again, there's a filter for when you're filling it, and then there's also a pickup filter for when it's being used. We do have a reminder tag here about the type of fluid that goes in. We've got the ISO 32, as mentioned, and then you can use an ISO 46 in the warmer climates. From this angle, I can also show you the bed plate. So on a chipper, you have two cutting surfaces. You have the blade itself, and then you have the secondary so if you can imagine a pair of scissors, you need that second side to make the cut. So the bed plate is just that, and it's adjustable on slots. So there's a, a specified gap between the blades in the housing and the bed plate, and then you're gonna use these bolts and these slots to set that according to the manual. We also have a chainsaw holder on this side. So this allows you to slide the bar of your chainsaw down in it's gonna rest on here and then you can tighten it into place so that you have somewhere to put your chainsaw when you're heading out with the tractor into the forest or onto the acreage. Our serial number plate can be found down on the gray assembly and that's gonna give you your model number as well as the serial number and the year it was made. I covered the discharge chute being 360 degrees rotatable but it also has a chip deflector here at the end, which allows us to place the chips close next to the chipper, or you can leave it all the way up 
to get those chips out of your way and send them as far as possible. Now that we've done the detailed walk around, I wanna get this hooked up to a tractor. I'm gonna trim the PTO shaft and show you guys how it works. So we're gonna get this backed up and attached to the tractor. So now that we've got the three point hitch all hooked up, I've gone ahead and done the measurements uh, to get the PTO shaft trimmed. I've done the trimming and now I'm just gonna get it connected. We do have a specific video on how to measure and trim that PTO shaft as well, if you'd like to be more informed. You'll notice on the PTO shaft, there's a label. It shows you which ends for the tractor, the other ends for the implement. We are also shear pin protected and they recommend that goes on the implement itself. We come up to the tractor end and then we have to connect our safety chains to stop the uh, outer sheath from rotating. There is Zerk fittings or greasable fittings on the PTO shaft for maintenance as well, but they do come well greased when new. Now we want to take the chipper. We've got it hooked up to the tractor. This is um, on the bottom end of our recommended horsepower range. So at the PTO, we have about 35 horsepower with the tractor today. That is going to limit our ability uh, to chip the largest material without using the red bar uh, to slow that material down or the infeed speed. So we're going to use the chipper on a wide variety. I'm going to find just some green material, some dead material, uh, some softwoods, some hardwoods, and we're going to try and put it all together in a compilation, and then I'll do a wrap up at the end.
we just want to kind of do a recap of the different material I was just chipping. So you see, we, we put quite a bit of poplar through there. We put quite a bit of eastern white cedar, um, both dry and green. Uh, we put some maple through dry, as well as some larger elm. And we tried to show you the size of the ends. Now you'll see the limit here is my tractor because we are on the bottom end of that uh, PTO horsepower range. And you'll see I was using the red bar, which I can put it into neutral and I can let the tractor recoup and then I can re-engage the bar. So that was the limitation of the tractor, not the chipper itself. Um, but you see how using the red bar or the speed controller can help you chip larger stuff than your tractor could continuously chip uh, just by using a pulse uh, motion with the red bar. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want any more information about our chipper, check us out at woodlandmills.com. And thank you for watching.